This is Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hey now, wrestling fans, it's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments. With the career spanning every national promotion as well as several prominent territories, you can be sure Sergeant Slaughter has had plenty of memorable matches and storylines. Sit back as Wrestling's Greatest Moments looks at Sergeant Slaughter's Greatest Moments, Part 1. Number 10. I Want My Country Back Few fans seemed thrilled by the WWF's decision to exploit the 1990s Persian Gulf crisis by turning Sergeant Slaughter heel and having the once proud patriot express his admiration for Iraq's Saddam Hussein. Sarge's quest for redemption featured a fun series of vignettes yet as he visited various historic landmarks in the United States. It's a long-standing tradition in wrestling that fans will forgive heels for the most heinous acts once they've turned babyface. However, wrestling usually requires some sort of rite of passage for a heel to turn back to the light, whether it's a vicious beating or, in the Sarge's case, a quest for forgiveness and redemption. While many fans are familiar with the vignettes of Slaughter's personal quest for atonement and the various vignettes where he visited historic landmarks, they may have forgotten the poignant promo that started the angle. Sergeant Slaughter disappeared from WWF television for several weeks following his loss to Hulk Hogan at SummerSlam's match Made in Hell in 1991. Then, the WWF aired an edition of Update with Lord Alfred Hayes on the September 28th edition of WWF Superstars, taking fans to a sit-down interview between Mean Gene Okerlund and Sergeant Slaughter. Okerlund reminded Slaughter of his loss at SummerSlam and the beating Hulk Hogan delivered, telling Slaughter he got everything he deserved. When Okerlund pressed the turncoat on his thoughts, Slaughter agreed, telling Okerlund he got everything he deserved. The Sarge confessed that he betrayed his friends, his family, and most of all his country in order to win the WWF Championship. He even associated with the slime of the earth as nothing would stop him from capturing wrestling's most coveted prize. Slaughter said he understood that his friends and family didn't want him back. However, there was one thing that hurt the most, losing his country. Slaughter told Mean Gene, I want my country back. Over the next two months, Slaughter appeared in his vignettes, seeking forgiveness for turning his back on America. Whether it was Slaughter visiting the Statue of Liberty, where he proclaimed Lady Liberty is the only lady in his life, or visiting a statue dedicated to Patriot Paul Revere, the vignettes showed Slaughter regaining his confidence and undergoing a spiritual rebirth. This culminated in a vignette where Slaughter led a group of young school children in saying the Pledge of Allegiance, with the misty-eyed Slaughter clutching Old Glory as he said, I have my country back. The vignettes might seem corny, but they represent how promoters in old-school wrestling understood that fans appreciated seeing a wrestler transform from villain to hero, or vice versa, through a storyline. Slaughter's quest to regain his country paid off as the fans forgave him and he was now cheered. The Sarge would team with fellow Patriot Jim Duggan, including a match at 1991's Survivor Series where he teamed with Jim Duggan, Tito Santana, and Kerry Von Erich, defeating the team of Colonel Mustafa, the Berserker, Hercules, and Skinner. Number 9 and new WWF World Champion. In 1991, the wrestling world watched in shock and disbelief as Sergeant Slaughter won the WWF Championship from the Ultimate Warrior. Not only had the seemingly invincible Warrior lost, but he lost to a wrestler who had turned his back on the values that made him a beloved babyface. Slaughter, who had joined forces with General Adnan, aka former wrestler and longtime heel manager Adnan Al Casey, and Colonel Mustafa, aka Sarge's former arch foe, the Iron Sheik, was now promoting the virtues of Iraqi despot Saddam Hussein, particularly his admiration for Hussein's toughness. The fact that Hussein's military had invaded Kuwait and a global coalition was in the midst of retaking Kuwait seemed inconsequential to the WWF which continued the storyline. On January 19, 1991, Slaughter challenged the Ultimate Warrior for the WWF Championship, a title the Warrior had defeated Hulk Hogan for at WrestleMania VI, and even with the presence of General Adnan, Slaughter wasn't favored to win the match. Unfortunately for the Warrior, he'd made the mistake of rebuffing Macho King Randy Savage's manager, Sensational Sherry, who had called him out, asking if the Warrior would grant the Macho King a title shot should he retain against Slaughter. Sensational Sherry tried wooing Warrior with her feminine and wiles, but he wasn't buying it and spit at the ground, telling her no. The ever-volatile Savage decided to teach the Warrior a lesson, attacking him during the Warrior's match with Slaughter. Savage lived up to his name, clobbering the Warrior with a piece of lighting equipment. Showing his battle prowess, Slaughter distracted the referee, allowing the Macho Man to dish out the punishment and leave Warrior so beat up he had to crawl back to the ring. The Ultimate Warrior somehow surged back and looked to have the match won. However, Sergeant Slaughter was keen to the tactical situation around him and he blindsided a distracted warrior, knocking him down into the ring ropes. This allowed Savage to break his royal scepter over the soon-to-be ex-champion's noggin while Sarge distracted the referee. Even the warrior couldn't come back from this shellacking and Sarge dropped an elbow for the insurance package, covering the warrior to obtain the 1-2-3 and the belt. 
Although Sergeant Slaughter had held many regional titles, this was his first world singles title and a huge achievement. Despite the controversy surrounding his storyline, this was a milestone in Slaughter's career as he joined the elite group of wrestlers to hold the WWF Championship. Slaughter would hold the belt hostage until WrestleMania 7 when Hulk Hogan captured the belt. However, Slaughter adopted a scorched earth policy fireballing the Hulkster backstage after his win. The Slaughter-Hogan feud would finally finish at 1991's SummerSlam when Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior defeated Slaughter, General Adnan, and Colonel Mustafa in a handicap match dubbed The Match Made in Hell. Number 8. The Super Destroyer Mark II the Super Destroyer is a type of wrestling name too good to let go idle. Indeed, various wrestlers have donned a mask to portray Super Destroyers, including Hulk Hogan during the early days of his career. Another is Sergeant Slaughter, who began working in the American Wrestling Association in 1973 as Bob Remus. Later, he also began working as Bob Slaughter, touring various promotions including Central States Wrestling and Georgia Championship Wrestling. The Super Destroyer Mark II wasn't the first masked identity the Sarge adopted. He'd also worked as the Executioner in Georgia Championship Wrestling. However, business picked up when he donned the hood again, this time in the AWA where he worked as Super Destroyer Mark II. With wrestler-turned-manager Lord Alfred Hayes by his side, the Super Destroyer was a formidable foe, so much so that he earned AWA World Heavyweight Championship matches against then-champion Nick Bockwinkle. The Super Destroyer also teamed with Super Destroyer Mark III before Super Destroyer II betrayed Alfred Hayes, joining manager Bobby the Brain Heenan. The Super Destroyer was a key period that saw the future Sergeant Slaughter come into his own as a single star. From there, things would only get better. 7. The Cobra Clutch Challenge as any good promoter knows, professional wrestling is about much more than the matches. They're about exciting storylines that bring fans to arenas. One way to do so is to give a wrestler a hook, something that makes them stand out from others and adds an extra element to their character. When Bob Remus adopted his Sergeant Slaughter persona, he also introduced his Cobra Clutch Challenge, a contest in which he gave opponents a chance to escape from his submission finisher, the Cobra Clutch. If the wrestler escaped, they'd get a hefty cash reward. With Slaughter playing a sadistic marine drill instructor turned heel wrestler, fans knew Slaughter wasn't offering the money without an ulterior motive. The Cobra Clutch Challenge became a useful tool for adding heat to Slaughter's character and for showing how dangerous the hold could be. This tied in with promoters' use of squash matches to show fans what a wrestler could do against average opponents, inviting them to wonder how better skilled wrestlers could do in a match. Likewise with the Cobra Clutch. Slaughter typically started off by facing enhancement talent who proved no match for the hold. Slaughter also showed his sadistic side when he refused refused to let go of the hold after an opponent has submitted, making the fans loathe him all the more. As more wrestlers succumb to the challenge, an up-and-coming star would step in, either coming close to escaping or seemingly on their way to escaping, when Slaughter cheated or began beating them down. Such was the case when Blackjack Mulligan Jr., who later became known as Barry Windham, rose to the challenge on the December 26, 1981 episode of Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. NWA representative Sandy Scott was on hand to ensure no chicanery, and he made sure Slaughter surrendered the $1,000 prize to him for safekeeping. If you can't trust an official from the National Wrestling Alliance, who can you trust? Slaughter began playing games with Mulligan Jr., first elbowing him in the shoulder, a move that wasn't part of the challenge. Scott warned Slaughter that any more actions like that and he'd be fined more than $1,000. Slaughter employed the Larry Zabisco eight-minute stall as he hemmed and hawed about putting the Cobra Clutch on. Finally, he locked it in as Mulligan rose to his feet, fighting the hold like a man possessed. Blackjack Jr. rammed Slaughter into the corner, but the hold remained on. A snapmare took Slaughter down, but the hold remained locked in. Mulligan even dove into the corner, but Slaughter still held the move. Mulligan dropped to the mat, but refused to quit, eventually getting back to his feet and looking to be out of the hold. Unfortunately, the fans never got to see what happened as the episode went off the air. Slaughter was confident that Mulligan hadn't escaped the hold, but Blackjack Mulligan Jr. said he'd escaped. The only problem was that there was no video footage. Slaughter demanded his $1,000 back, but Mulligan had obtained a court injunction seeking relief. Slaughter was in no hurry to give Mulligan a second chance. While it's unknown if the storyline led to Slaughter giving Blackjack Jr. a second shot at escaping the hold, promoters used the storyline to promote house show matches, in this case, a series of Cobra Clutch matches where Mulligan tried to get the $1,000 he felt was rightfully his. Number 6. Whipping Bob Backlund Wrestling babyfaces are known for questionable thinking, particularly when it comes to how they treat their heel opponents. In fact, long before Dark Helmet uttered the famous words in Spaceballs, so, Lone Star, now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. 
Babyface champion Bob Backlund would routinely place himself in situations where his seeming naivete got the best of him. Such was the case in 1983 when Bob Backlund wanted to show fans the importance of physical fitness and to remind everyone of his considerable cardio conditioning. Backlund appeared on the April 9, 1983 edition of Championship Wrestling, discussing the Harvard step-up test during Rogers Corner. Dr. George Sahorian was also present to discuss the difficulties of the test, an ironic situation for anyone familiar with Zahorian's later history with the WWF. Backlund sought to break his personal best record with the step-up test. He later did so on the set of Rogers Corner, a talk segment hosted by Buddy Rogers, the first man to win both the NWA and WWF championship. However, Sergeant Slaughter wasn't so impressed. Slaughter appeared on Rogers Corner during the May 14, 1983 edition of Championship Wrestling. As always, the Sarge was accompanied by his manager, the Grand Wizard. Slaughter listened while Rogers extolled Bob Backlund's incredible physical conditioning and his ability to perform the Harvard step-up test. Sergeant Slaughter dismissed Backlund's achievement of 3,600 steps in an hour, claiming he'd done 3,601 steps during his time at Paris Island. Furthermore, he'd done so in his military uniform and while holding his M16 rifle. The Sarge stopped one step short of saying he did the step-up test while standing in an active volcano. Like any good heel, he also found time to mock Buddy Rogers, telling him he once respected him, but the last time he saw Rogers, he was throwing a drunk out of a casino. Slaughter called Rogers a liar for saying he'd watched Backlund perform the step test and challenged Backlund to perform the test in front of the fans on national TV. Slaughter had thrown down the gauntlet, and sure enough, Backlund picked it up. The next week's episode of Championship Wrestling featured Backlund performing the step-up test at ringside while various matches took place. Would Backlund be able to do 3,602 steps in an hour as Slaughter had challenged him? As the show continued, Backlund seemed well on his way to breaking his own record. However, Sergeant Slaughter wasn't going to let that happen. Slaughter was scheduled for a match against Tony Gurria, but before the match could get started, the Sarge began talking trash to Bob Backlund. Slaughter exited the ring to continue berating Backlund, walking up to the WWF champion. Backlund's manager, Arnold Scollin, tried to intervene only for Slaughter to toss him aside. Seeing Scollin in trouble, a common occurrence in Backlund's career as Scollin rarely served any purpose other than to serve as a plot device to have Bob seek revenge on the latest heel who assaulted him, Backlund went after Slaughter. However, Slaughter unloaded on Backlund, using the riding crop he carried with him to matches to whip Backlund across the back. As Jim Ross might have said had he been there, Backlund was whipped like a government mule. Naturally, this led to a series of matches as Slaughter sought Backlund's WWF Championship while Backlund sought revenge. Backlund got a measure of revenge while also managing to hang on to the WWF Championship. What are your favorite moments from Sergeant Slaughter's career? Be sure to check back for part two as we look at five more great moments from Sarge's career. Share your thoughts in the comments section and let us know if there are any videos you'd like wrestling's greatest moments to cover. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and spread the good news about wrestling's greatest moments, the channel that celebrates the squared circle.